For more on the talks going on today and tomorrow, we're joined once again by Orville Schell, a China scholar and director of the Center on U.S.-China Relations at the Asia Society here in New York. Welcome back. Pleasure. We just heard President Obama as he was talking about the importance of the bilateral relationship between the U.S. and China. How significant do you think his speech was? Well, I think they're trying to merge these two extremely important families, the most important families of the world, China and the U.S. And uh, I, I think, you know, if it failed, it would be catastrophic. What they're trying to do is build a different kind of relationship, a new relationship, where we have more areas of convergence and cooperation than disagreement, and that's the challenge. Well, the president outlined sort of four areas that he saw as, as priority, uh, economic recovery, climate change, proliferation of nuclear arms, and what he called transnational threats or terrorism. How likely are we to see eye to eye on all of those issues? Well, we won't, and th th there are many areas where we do have profound disagreements. But we are at a point in the world's history where if we don't uh, have agreement on issues such as the global economy and climate change, uh, we're not going to find remedies. So w the, the, the whole chemistry has changed now with China. We must cooperate and collaborate despite different systems, different viewpoints, and many disagreements on other subjects. What is likely to come out of this meeting? I mean, set agreements, something to be signed, or just we had a good talk and we'll talk further in the future? Well, I think the, the baton has been handed off from the Bush administration on, on what is now a strategic and economic dialogue, not the strategic economic dialogue. It's wider. And uh, Hillary Clinton will do the strategy, and uh, Tim Geithner will do the economics. So th this is to kind of X-ray the entire U.S.-China relationship and periodically kind of send it in for a tune-up, these, these uh, meetings twice a year. And this will uh, keep, I think, what is often a very uh, uh, unstable relationship on a much more stable basis. What do you think could be the two most contentious issues? Well, I think the, the issue that's really uh, important now is climate change because the Copenhagen negotiations are coming up in December. And if the U.S. and China could make some agreements that would give heart to the world to show that they are now in the game in a serious manner, this would be an incredibly important uh, uh, move forward. So that's going to be negotiated now, but they're much, China's a developing country, we're a developed country. We have different obligations than they do, but how do we both consecrate ourselves to solving that problem? That's going to be one of the biggest questions under discussion. And then I presume when we talk about uh, you know, nuclear arms, we're talking about North Korea. The eternal subject of North Korea. And the truth is, you know, we love to think of if China would only do this, that, and the other, we could trap North Korea. But I think China does not have as much influence as we imagine. I mean, this is a very autarkic, independent uh, state, but it's extremely important that we, we collaborate with China to do what can be done to bring them to heel. Like Iran, not an easy topic to have a clear solution for. Orville Shell, thank you once again. Pleasure.